This has to work at all. It's just a prop, folks. Are you ready? Open the doors. She's about to come out here. Only one, there's only one, like the woman I'm about to present, the greatest entertainer, entertainer Broadway has ever produced. Ladies and gentlemen, here to sing for you is the incomparable Ethel Merman. the time of my life learning to enjoy at my leisure all the simple pleasures and so I happily conceive this is all I ask this is all I Good-looking men walk a little slower when you walk by me. Lingering sunsets stay a little longer with the lonely sea. Children everywhere. understand wandering rainbow leave a little color for my heart to own stars in the sky make my wish come true before the night has Come back and talk to Ethel right after this message. See, that was the biggest surprise in the world for me to hear you sing that gorgeous song. In a lovely song. Which Gordon Jenkins, I guess, wrote for Frank Sinatra. I've never heard a girl sing it. Really? Because the opening line is beautiful girl. So you threw in I a little... I couldn't very well say that. No. Walk a little slower when you walk by me. Right. Not me, being married four times. <laughs> See, and I didn't even ask, <laughs> folks, right? <laughs> That's no. amazing. I've never heard a girl sing that before. Really? Do you know the origin of that song? No. That was written in New York City in honor of construction workers. Construction workers? Yep. I hear them. And now that spring is here in New York, I thought it was the birds outside my window. It's all the construction workers whistling, right, at girls. He was walking down a street, and they were doing a building. 
Yeah. And he heard construction girls, girl, uh, workers saying to girls, hey, beautiful girl, walk a little slower when you walk by me. How about and that? And went right to a piano and wrote that song. Well, he certainly did a good job. He it's a sure did. I think it's did. one of the best things he's ever written. Do you ever walk by guys and say, hey, good looking guy, walk a little slower? Not you? construction workers. No, no. no. <laughs> You wouldn't mind a construction worker, though? No, they're pretty rugged looking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're nice. Yeah, with the helmets and everything. You've never yeah. cared about the position in life that one of those six husbands has had, have you? Four. Oh, four, I mean, four. 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 Please. You've no. never worried about them, be whether they were a plumber, a baker, a candlestick? Oh, no, no, but they, a couple of them worried about me, whether I was up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> Oh, yes, my dear. Think you'll ever do it again, Ethel? Are you kidding? Huh? No, I've said this before to you. I you know, know, but why, I don't why, believe you. Why, That's why. Buy the cow and you can get the milk for free. That's you know? right. Good. Good. I couldn't be bothered. I really? just, I couldn't be bothered having someone around me all day long and then tell me what to do. I'm, I, I have such a wonderful life now. I love my independence. I come and go as I please. You ever lonesome? I go out without, no. Huh? No, as a matter of fact, uh, when I'm, when I'm home, because I live right here in New York now, and, and when I'm home, I sort of relish the, the, the fact that sometimes I go to bed, if I'm home alone, I go to bed sometimes at 7.30, 8 o'clock, watch television, and have a wonderful night's sleep, and, and it's great. <laughs> yes. You got a hot tub? You don't tub? believe me, do you? <laughs> See, if you were living in California, you'd have a hot tub. I got a hot tub and a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I worry about you, Ethel. Oh, I mean, don't worry about me. But you led a kind of nice, raucous life along with your uh, yeah. great public uh, image. Yeah, sure. It just seems that but the town's quieted down when Ethel Merman quiets down. Well, I don't, I live a, really, you don't I, knit, live a, I, do you? I lead a very low-key life. I just go out, you know, with my friends to dinner or something like that. Yeah. There's nothing very great that I, that I do. You know, I don't go all these parties and these April and Paris balls and somebody has a hangnail and they throw a big ball or something yeah. at the PA. The, I don't the know. hangnail ball you is know, very sure, big in New York. You know, but, but, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't go to those functions. I don't like crowds. I like to be like maybe about six of my friends or eight of my friends, and that's tops. I don't like cocktail parties where you stand around and you're... You're tired. You I know. know what you do. You sing around the house. I don't. I never, I never open my throat from one engagement to another. The last time... You don't go, me, he, no, me, he, me, he, me, he, me, he, me, he, me. No, 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 no. The last time I sang, my word of honor, was March the 27th. We did a show at the Ed Sullivan Theater for home box office, a show called Showstoppers. Yeah. And that's the last time I sang. Now I won't open my throat again till I go. I go to Canton, Ohio, with the symphony. You go to Monaco, and then and then Richmond, Virginia, and then to Monaco for a TV special in Monaco. We go. Would you know that place that backwards? Huh? Done four shows there. Yep. You're never going to have a time like that, and you're going to be working for Marty Pacetta. Yep. On yep. the big Monaco show from yes, the sporting, sporting club. club. Wait till you get a load of that. The closest I've got. You won't be show. going. With a television. No. Mm -mm. Well, I don't know. Mm. I guess in Nice, they're nice, huh? I mean... In Nice, they are nice, right? <laughs> and yeah. you must go to Cannes, too. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, see, I'm not the kind of this. I have to get up to the with south this of stuff. France, oh, yes, right. I, yeah. I've never been there. I've been all through Europe now. Does I've it, been in here all over. Does it ever bother you, Ethel? I mean, you go to see shows now. Sure. And I understand the problem, but in the last two shows I have seen, everybody's got a microphone pinned to their chest and there are giant microphones coming out of the footlights yeah i mean they've well, shut them off when you appear don't they uh, well when i did shows i mean we just had them uh, when i first did shows there were no microphones at all you had and a then, horn and then eventually no and then eventually they put the microphones down on the foots where they or where the foot slide would be but you know why i think they do it now because i think all the music is orchestrated heavier the well, band is I asked Ken Marshall heavier. from West Side Story, I said, Ken, why all of the microphones? He said, because music has changed, and in the orchestras, they're using a lot of amplified That's instruments. That's right. You and see? in order to sing over That's it, right. you got to do it. Well, like, for instance, in concert, when I work with the Philharmonics and the symphonies, I have to wear a chest mic because, uh, like, 90 musicians behind me, the, the, each section, the violin section, the viola section, that's all mic'd. Yeah. And I, I have to. I just but I mean, like, to. let me give you an example for right now. Now, well, see the, the size of this auditorium? Yeah. Watch me, just turn off the microphones, watch me hit a high note. 
Do you hear? Hit a high note. You hit a high note. Yeah, I did. Yeah, oh. but there's no band behind you. No. See? Plus, there's I no didn't music hit a, behind you. I didn't hit a high note. Uh, mm -hmm. Were you in vaudeville? Uh, I played, uh, before I went into Girl Crazy, I played the Palace when the yeah. palace was two a day. As a matter of fact, I uh, played there for two weeks, and I used to go from the palace to up to the Alvin Theater to, re to rehearse Girl Crazy with Ginger Rogers and, and Willie and Eugene Howard, and yes. Yeah. At what moment in your musical career, your Broadway career, Ethel, did you know you were a star? When Buddy De Silva put my name over the title. <laughs> was that it? In Panama Hattie. I had always been like, under the, it was like the show and then with so-and-so and so-and-so. But he was the first one to star me in a Broadway show. It was Ethel Merman in Panama Hattie. And then I knew I had arrived. Matter of fact, I took a picture of it. Did, did for example, show. when you first worked for the Gershwins, did they tell you prior to opening night you will be made in uh, the show? George Gershwin told me. As a matter of fact, during rehearsals, he was the one who told me never to go near a, um, a singing teacher. And I never have. Never in my life have I ever had a singing lesson. It's a little late to start now, but I mean, uh, I've never gone. So one. from engagement to engagement, you don't even open your mouth? Never. You walk in the first no, day? No, no, I have How do you know it's there? Well, the man up there is with me. It's always there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a theory that if you, you know, you vocalize a lot, by the time you get out of the stage, you're tired. The throat's tired. Yeah. That's my opinion. I don't know. Who knows? Hey. What? I, this is all off the cuff. We did not talk before the show. Let me sing a duet with you. Let me do Russell Knipe and Call Me Madam. Well, of course. Mort. My Nevada, this is the first I've heard of it. E flat, Mort. Is that your key or my key? I don't know. We'll see how it comes out. Did you do first verse? One of her best moments. I hear music and there's no one there. I hear laughing. The trees. The trees are bare. All day long I seem to walk on air. I wonder why. I wonder why. I keep talking in my sleep at night And what's more, I've lost my appetite Stars that used to twinkle in my eyes Are twinkling in your eyes I wonder why You don't need analyzing It is not so surprising That you feel very strange But nice I love it. Your heart goes in a patter. I know just what's the matter. Because I've been there once or twice, twice. Oh, God. Put your head on my shoulder. You need someone who's older. A rub down with a velvet glove. There is nothing you can take to relieve that pleasant ache. You're not sick, you're just in. But the trees are bare Your heart All day goes long I seem to walk I don't on air I wonder why Isn't that so? <laughs> you have no idea what that's like. My ears are still ringing. It was so exciting. And so are mine. <laughs> oh, I've never sung with you thrill. before either. Have once you? before we did that. We did? Yeah, we oh, did that. Oh, Hollywood, that's right. Yeah, once yeah, we did. Yeah, I remember that. Quite yeah. a while ago, though. John Philip Sousa led the band. It yeah, was yeah. yeah, we sang over them. Yeah. And then couldn't hear the band. Ethel, yeah. as always, I love Thank being you. I'm, anywhere I love, with you. You're I love doing your show. great Mark. lady and a great gifted performer. Well, you're a wonderful Our host, best. and it's nice to be with you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Ethel Merman, ladies and gentlemen.